Hi everyone, Richard Robbins here. Well, I got a cool video I'm creating and it's called Outperforming the Marketplace. I'm gonna give you five key points. Now, the reason I've done this is because I had a call with the coaches not long ago as we do on a regular basis and there's many markets, okay, across Canada and even some in the US that are changing, okay? They're starting to change a little bit. Not all markets, but some are changing. Now, if your market isn't changing, this video might not be for you or you might watch it anyway because there's still some pretty good content that I think would work in any marketplace. But this video is geared towards markets that are changing a little bit where inventory is going up and maybe sales are off a little bit. And when I was talking to the coaches, they said that a number of members are struggling, not knowing what to do. They've never experienced a changing market. So I thought to myself, let's throw a video together. Let's get it out to as many people as possible. And hopefully this will be helpful to those people that are trying to figure out how to outperform the market as the market is changing. So key point number one is the first step to outperform the market is we need to face reality. We got to face reality as it is, not as we wish it was. Here's what happens. A lot of people, they stick their head in the sand and they go, oh boy, the market's a little bit off. Well, you know, I'll sit at home and relax. I, I don't want to panic. You know what I mean? It's going to get better in the spring. And, and let's face it, that might happen and let's hope it all does happen. But the challenge there is, is you're not facing the reality or at least you're not doing anything about it, right? So think about this. If you looked at your marketplace, and let's say your marketplace was off by 20% in a month, in a quarter, whatever the case is, and then compare that to your business, and your business is off by, say, 20% or 15% or maybe 25%, well, if you continue to do the same things and the market doesn't change, what's going to happen to your business? You're going to come in way under goal, and that's not what you want to do. See, truth is a discovery of reality, and to ignore the truth doesn't change the truth. But also, think about this. Guess what you can't do? You can't change the market. You can only change you. See, the market doesn't have to determine your success. The market doesn't have to determine how many sales you're going to do every single month, only if you let it. So let's move on to step number two, is what we want to do is we want to double our output. Now, what is an output? Well, an input is what you want coming in. They're the results that you want to produce, the amount of sales, the amount of listings you want to take, the amount of buyer sales you want to have, listing sales, price reductions, whatever it is. That's sort of what you're trying to do, but to get that, we've got to, we've got to put out. You know what I mean? We've got to go out and we've got to work for that. It's like this, if, if I want to have more energy, I got to give my body exercise. You want to make more money, you got to bring more value to the marketplace. You got to talk to more people, right? You got to do a better job. So what about doubling your output. Now let's look at this. Here's some things you could double. What about doubling your calls to your database? Now maybe right now you're not doing any and then double would still be zero. I don't know if you know that or not, but, but pick a number. How many people should you be talking to every single day? Okay, get in the game. What about text? Are you sending texts out to people and saying, hey, you know, you probably know the market's been changing a little bit and I, I just want to reach out and let you know if you want me to stop by and, and provide an opinion of value and let you know what's going on, uh, I'm here to help in any way I can. What would happen if you made five calls to your database every day and then you send five texts out every day with something like that? You know what I mean? So it's not salesy, but you're just offering service. What about this? What about bomb bomb videos? What if you did some bomb bomb videos every day, maybe five of those as well, and you send those videos out to your clients, to your database, to people you know, to maybe buyer leads, to maybe seller leads, you know, and you send them out a little video because when they get a video in the email, there's a much stronger possibility they're going to read that email and open that video. And now they see you're doing a little bit of work. So imagine this. Five calls, five texts, five videos, that's 15 per day. Maybe you should do 10, 10, and 10. Because if your business is off, this is what you got to start to do. Open houses, double, triple the amount of open houses you're doing and all marketing efforts. So whatever it is you're doing, say you're doing a bunch of Facebook Live or you're doing some videos you're posting on social media or Instagram stories. So take all of your marketing efforts, whatever you've been doing in the past that is producing success for you, go back and think about it. What are the outputs, you know, the things, the behaviors, the actions that I take every day that have been producing results for me in my career and then get very strategic and say, 
I need to double those and then start setting specific goals on what you're going to do every single day. Okay, step number three is what you want to do is you want to track all output or outputs, okay? It was interesting, when we were having this call with the coaches, coaches were all throwing ideas out, and by the way, that's where most of these ideas come from. And one of the coaches said that she could never get one of the members to track their daily activities, like the things they're doing every single day. So the coach said, listen, there's one thing you've got to start doing, you've got to start tracking. So this member started tracking, and you know what the member discovered? They weren't doing very much. See, that's the power in tracking. When you track on a regular basis your outputs, you start to see what it is you're doing or maybe what it is you're not doing. See, Peter Drucker, he said, what we measure gets improved. Now think about this for a moment. If you were trying to lose weight, would you be better to weigh yourself every day, every week, every month, or every year? Okay, now pretty simple answer, right? You're better to weigh yourself when? Every day. Because if you weigh yourself every day and you happen to see that, you know, maybe you're sitting at a, a weight that you're uncomfortable with, that would probably cause you to have different behaviors that day. So in other words, you probably maybe wouldn't eat quite as much, maybe you wouldn't have the dessert or whatever the case is, right? But because you're aware of what's going on, then it's going to change your behavior because awareness is the first step in change. We got to make ourselves aware. Now, some people won't get on the scale because they don't want to know. Now, that's okay. That's totally up to you and how you want to handle it. But if you want to start performing at a whole new level, what you got to start to do, you got to start to track what it is you're doing on a daily basis. So, what is your goal? How many calls? How many texts? Okay. How many videos? How many open houses? How many whatever it is you're going to do to produce results? And then what you want to start to do is you want to start tracking them and see how you do against the goal. Because at the end of the day, if you want to make five calls and you only made three, chances are the next day you're going to do a little better. You know what I mean? Maybe you can get to five. Maybe you'll get to seven. But here's something that I use. This is an app that I use. It's called Momentum. Now, I think I paid for it. I don't remember now. But if I did, so it was maybe $4.95 or $7.95 or whatever it was. But what I do is I track my behaviors. And in Momentum, what I can do is, you know, say five calls, I could check it off, I did it. Okay, five texts, check it off, I did it. Right, five videos, check it off. Exercise, done, right? Whatever it is that you want to do on a daily basis that will help you produce great results, start tracking it in Momentum. And what's cool about Momentum is what it does now, it shows you how many days in a row, okay, or you think about it, You've got something moving, so all of a sudden you got this momentum going, okay, because you're on a roll, you're going to start to feel good about yourself. You're going to be excited about what it is you're doing, and it's going to encourage you to do more, okay, or get somebody to hold you accountable, whatever it is you need to do. But one thing you've got to start to do is you've got to track, okay, your activities, track your behaviors, track your outputs, whatever you want to call it. So let's move on to step number four is called be intentional. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that you want to be intentional about setting appointments. So think about this. All of the activities you perform, all the lead gen activities you perform, all the lead follow-up activities you perform, all the calls you make, all the text you send, all the videos you send, all the things you're doing, what should be your intention? Your intention is to set a face-to-face -face appointment. Because unless you get face-to-face, -face, nothing is going to happen. It's not just about having a communication going back and forth. So when I say intentional, what you want to do is every text, every call, every communication, you want to make sure that you're thinking about, should I be getting face-to-face -face with this person? You know, maybe you can get somebody out and you can show them a house. Maybe what you can do is you can price a house for somebody. Maybe you can do a listing presentation. You know, maybe you can meet with a new buyer, okay, and talk about how you can provide a high level of service for them. And they're really the four appointments you want to focus on. So always be intentional. And the reason why is because when you're intentional, now you're going to be setting a goal. So what would be your goal? And you decide. Because remember, behaviors, okay, outputs are behaviors, they're actions, and all those actions should lead to a what? A result. So what is the result you want to get? So you're going to perform all these actions every day, the outputs, but then you have to have a goal in terms of a result. So what I would say is at least set one appointment per day. Think about this. If you set one appointment per day, five days a week, you don't have any financial challenges in your life. It doesn't matter what's going on in the marketplace. Now, maybe some of you got large teams and you're going to set this at two, you're going to set this at three, whatever the case is. But every morning when you go to work, set your intention. 
And what is your intention the minute you start work is to set a face-to-face -face appointment. Because when you get together in front of more people, you're going to do more business, no matter what is going on in the market. So let's move on to step five. Okay, step number five is what you wanna do is you wanna qualify all prospects for motivation. Now, why is this? What happens when a market starts to shift? Sometimes what happens, we have more listings come on the market. Our inventory starts to rise. People start to compete to sell. If you think about it, it becomes somewhat of a, a price war and a beauty contest to get a home sold, right? And they're not all gonna sell. Less homes are going to sell because you got more inventory and you probably got less buyers. Well, that means that if you list a house and that house doesn't sell, you spent time and money marketing that house and you didn't get paid. Not a good thing. That'll put you out of business. Now, chances are you're probably gonna carry more listings, but the secret is you wanna make sure you're working with sellers that really want to sell, not people that are testing the market. Think about this. If people are testing the market, is their price gonna be high or low? The price is gonna be high because they don't care if they sell. There's no motivation, right? But if somebody has to sell a house, maybe they bought a new home and their new home is closing, uh, they've been transferred, you know, maybe they, they need to downsize, they don't need all the space, maybe there's uh, financial challenges, whatever the case is, maybe their family is growing and they need something bigger. That's motivation. They're the type of people you gotta be working with because think about buyers, the same thing with buyers. You know, buyers in a changing market, maybe rates are creeping up a little bit. They see a lot of for sale signs out there. Oh, they go, prices must be going down. Let's take our time. There's no rush anymore. And by the way, the market before was totally different. You phoned up a buyer, you said, you gotta look at this today. If you want it, you're gonna have to put an offer in tomorrow. And then there was like 16 offers. You know, one person won, 15 people lost, right? That was difficult. Now they go exactly the opposite. They go, well, boy, we're in no rush. You know, we're gonna get a really good deal. So what you want to do is you want to find buyers that are motivated. What's the reason for buying, okay? So here's what you want to focus on. You want to focus on where, when, and why. So ask all of your prospects when you're meeting with a potential seller or maybe do this on the phone before you go over. When you're meeting with a buyer, ask them these questions. You know, I'm really curious. Where are you moving to? And, well, boy, you know, we're, we're moving over here. Great. When do you want to be moved by? Well, we'd like to be moved in the next four or five months, right? And then you can say, well, I'm curious. Why are you moving? Now, if they have a when and they have a where, they automatically have a why, right? They'll tell you the why. But think about this. They have no when and they have no where, and they need to have a why. So in other words, where are you moving? We're not quite sure yet. When do you want to be moved by? Doesn't matter, right? No big deal. And you might say, well, why are you moving? Well, actually, we're getting divorced, right? So they have no when, they have no where, but now they have a why. And actually, you have two leads instead of one. That's a good thing as well. But anyway, we won't get into that. So I'm just saying that as the market changes, because remember, when a market's really, really busy, sellers are getting a fortune for their house, they're all excited, they're getting over list price, buyers are self-motivated because they know if they don't get in quick and put in a very good offer, they're probably not gonna get the home. But all of a sudden the market starts to shift, the rules change. So what you have to do is make sure you're spending time with people that are motivated. Now, as I close this out, I wanna say none of this is rocket science, you know that. This is what I call the basic fundamentals of success. The challenge, when a market gets really hot for a long period of time, which some markets experience, and now they're becoming more balanced, what ends up happening is, you know, we get a little bit lazy. We don't have to motivate buyers. They're self-motivated, right? Every time we have a conversation with a seller, it's a good conversation because they're getting a fortune for their house. Now, all of a sudden, the relationship changes. You know, we've got to motivate buyers. We've got to help them see why that house is a good house for them. We've got to get them to make a reasonable offer so they can get the home. We've got to have difficult conversations with sellers now because now we've got to tell them the truth. We've got to, like, pull the Band-Aid off, right? You've got to start showing them their competition that's on the market. Maybe you need to take them out and show them some of the competition so they can see where they need to price so they actually can get their home sold. So you move from becoming somewhat of an order taker, right, to becoming a great salesperson. And it's a great salespeople that are going to outperform the market like they've never done before. But keep in mind, the key is this. This isn't rocket science. I've always said that real estate is simple. It's just not easy. See, it's simple. This stuff is simple. It's just not easy to do every day because we get distracted. We're not holding ourselves accountable. You know, we get caught up in busyness, right? And busyness is a choice, by the way. 
We just got to make some better decisions. So if you're interested, okay, in outperforming the market, seriously consider these five ideas, okay? Read them every day. Think about what your outputs are going to be. Look at them on a regular basis, okay? Hold yourself accountable, and I promise you this, you can have the best year in real estate you've ever had. And remember, it's a beautiful life, everybody. Make it count.